let's start with a very simple example. Actually, this will be reminiscent of um, something we discussed earlier. It had to do with rate of the rate of change. If you remember that uh, that a particular section, we were asked to see how um, how fast it was a certain quantity changing as we move from a certain uh, value to a nearby one. And so that was given to us by the by the derivative. Right now, we're going to actually try to compute based on that the actual uh, new value. But since we have the linear approximation, just knowing f prime, which is what we computed before in the, in the rate of change section, and we already know uh, the value, the function of the point, then we have all the information we need to be able to approximate things. So something that will may, also, may sound, um, as I said, uh, familiar to you, it's the approximation, approximation uh, uh, the change in area. area due to change in diameter of a circle. So this is example three in the book. I'm going to emphasize something here because this is, uh, uh, I think it this is one of the few examples where you can actually see the linear approximation playing out uh, uh, and you can actually see it. Uh, is to see how, how, how relevant it is and how the other how, how the other terms are much smaller than what you're trying to, uh, to uh, compute when you're trying to approximate. So the area of a circle, say, suppose this is the diameter, this is the diameter D, then the area area of uh, as a function of t is well. You already know that the the area of a well, of a circle is pi r squared, but r squared is d over two. It's just this is r, right? D over two. So my d over two squared, which is equal to pi times d squared d squared over over 4. So what happens if we increase the diameter just a little bit? So let me just so this is not kind of the picture I wanted. If we increase the diameter just a little bit, let's make it symmetric. What will be the new area? Well, we still know that the area of, supposed to what we added, we add small quantity delta d to the diameter to the diameter and we see what happens to the area. So the area here, the change in area, the, the new area plus delta D. Sorry about that. Is equal to pi over four d plus delta d d squared, which is pi over four times, and we can expand this expression here. It's a perfect square d squared plus two times delta d times d, and then uh, plus delta 
d squared okay so this is how this looks like delta d squared this is equal to pi over 4 d squared plus pi over 2 delta d times d plus pi over 4 delta d squared so um so here what what is going on we see that this term so as we if we increase uh, the diameter by a small amount uh, delta d we see we need to add a correction so this is the whole the new area is equal to the the old area this is just a of d the old area then we have something depends on delta d and how far we are from uh, a but it depends linearly so it's just delta d and here's some quantity delta d squared so as uh, if delta d is much smaller than one so if delta d is much smaller than one it means that delta d squared is going to be much smaller than delta d just to convince yourself was if you have a delta d so example if delta d is equal to 0 0.1 then delta d squared delta d squared is going to be 0 0.01 <coughs> So which is much smaller than uh, 0.1 so this part here is uh, the main over approximation this is a much smaller correction to how uh, um, how the uh, the new area changes uh, when when you add a little bit of extra diameter this is much smaller compared to the rest so to compute the, the um, the the new area a good approximation is approximation approximation is this which is just a a d so the old area plus pi over 2 times delta d times d but let's look at this expression so what is this what is a prime of d remember what was uh, a the area is pi over 4 times d squared pi over 4 uh, here no yeah pi over 4 times d squared right so what is the derivative of that with respect to d prime of d so it's um, pi over 2 times uh, d so this here will just be uh, a prime at D times Delta D so let's go back a little bit and see what is the expression here what is the linear approximation is the value of the point in our case will be D and plus the derivative of the point which is D in this in this case uh, x naught will be equal to D times x minus x naught so the new diameter minus the old diameter and that's just delta d so this whole thing is just a linear approximation at uh, uh, of uh, the area at the point the uh, linear approximation of that at d plus delta d d plus delta d so this is the linear approximation of the area function okay and this is exactly why <clears throat> when we use that I mean the, the the we see in this particular example very explicitly this term term we're leaving out so the the, the area is exactly equal to this for this first two terms uh, that constitute the linear approximation plus this last quadratic term which is much smaller because of the discussion here if delta d is very small delta d squared is much much smaller than delta d so that's why we're dropping it out and you see as you get a delta d gets even smaller this quantity here gets even even smaller uh, compared to the rest
So that's why the linear approximation gets better the closer you are to the original point. Can you see that? That's a thing. So the, uh, the linear approximation actually gives us the, the predicted, uh, I mean, the best first order uh, approximation of the function near the point. <coughs> okay, so that's uh, it for this uh, um, video. I hope you are convinced that the linear approximation is actually good. Uh, from this example, just by noticing that what we're leaving outside in, uh, is very small compared to the rest. Uh, in, in most cases, we will not be able to write, uh, to expand everything completely and leave something like this, like uh, pi over four times delta d squared. But if you, trust me for, uh, for the moment, uh, it's always going to be like that. So it's always going to be something that is going to be comparable to delta t d squared, or, or what is the analog uh, at that for that particular example. And so that's what we focus on on on, uh, on this approximation, and insist that it's the best approximation you can make at a linear level. Okay, and Okay, even if you okay, even if some some of the things are not clear right now, I hope they will become clear when we when we look for uh, more systematically at, uh, at particular examples. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, just feel feel free to contact me. But I am pretty sure that once you look at the problems, you will understand how we're supposed to use this. Okay, it's actually very uh, elementary. It's just like. Uh, the rate of change section, it's just adding the value of the function at the point, and that's it.